<sighs> Hi everyone, Heathany Mantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, <laughs> and it's time for a review of this Orville Peck record, Bronco. This is the second full-length LP from Orville Peck, country singer and songwriter. Someone whose style hit me as instantly refreshing the moment I saw his masked face and dramatic music videos. Lord knows that country music could really use an artsy and even a queer flair right now, and Peck seemed like just the man to do it. The one issue that was holding me back from appreciating his music as much as I wanted to, though, at the time, uh, was the vocals. From his early singles to his sub-pop debut, Pony, I just didn't really feel like the singing was quite where I would have preferred it to be, which is tough because a lot of Peck's songs sounded really solid at their core. I also love that Peck fancies himself a crooner, plus he was just getting so much positive praise for his work, a Shania Twain crossover as well, and even an opportunity to uh, do a Lady Gaga cover on the official 10th anniversary edition of Born This Way, which is just proof to me that even if Peck's execution is not flawless, there's still something about his ideas that are so necessary and vital, which is why I think he graduated from the indie circuit to a mainstream label so quickly, moving to Sony's Columbia Records for this new project, with production from front to back from veteran session musician Jay Joyce, who's worked with everyone from Cage the Elephant to Emmylou Harris. But more importantly, listening to the teasers on this record, especially a track like Come On Baby Cry, the vocals are a lot a lot better. Peck really must have been putting in work to improve his volume, his range, the strength with which he is grabbing and squeezing certain notes. It is significant and frankly underrated the amount of skill it takes to be a good quality country crooner, especially one whose voice beams brighter and further than a spotlight. And again, for the most part on this LP, I think Peck is meeting that moment, even if tonally he sounds a little more Presley than he does Cash, with a hefty side dish of camp. Now, hardcore country fans be warned, uh, this record I think is more glam than I think it is grit, to the point where a few instrumental palettes here and there come off downright dreamy, like on the song Out of Time, which I have feelings about because I do like a lot of my country music too have a lot of twang, a little grime, but that still doesn't take away from how good some of the songs and vocal performances are on this pretty massive project that stands at 15 tracks and almost an hour of length. And across all these tracks, Peck covers a lot of country bases stylistically, from the sparkling and theatrical opener Daytona Sand, to the showdown guitars and locomotive rhythms on the track Any Turn. Either way, it just feels great personally to be enjoying Orville Peck's songs in the way that I wanted to enjoy them when I first ran across the man. Because again, that throttling chorus on Daytona Sand just sounds like a firework rocketing through the sky and then undergoing this huge colorful burst. The high notes that Peck is hitting on the Curse of the Blackened Eye just soar gorgeously. The forlorn poetry on this track hits hard as well, while the rhythm section sounds very chill and groovy in the way that a Velvet Underground song might from like the self-titled. But then that's very lovingly wrapped in these gentle country style embellishments. Come On Baby Cry might be my favorite Peck song that he's ever done. I love the lyrics on this one about being an emotional refuge for someone whose heart is broken. The verses have the subtlety of a teary-eyed dive bar ballad while the choruses hit hard like a Vegas stage show. Peck is also reaching for the stars on Iris Rose with the jaunty pianos and tipsy horns that saunter into the chorus there. But my one reservation about this track is that with that extra instrumentation, it had so much potential for a big finish that it just didn't quite hit. Then the song Kalahari Down While I'm Complaining may be an example of overshooting it a bit. Much of the instrumental is just drowning in these reverb-soaked guitars and drums, string sections too, and much of that country twang, that country flavor gets lost in translation. I still do appreciate the track for its massive show of emotion and the vocal performance though. The track Bronco is just rocking from front to back, totally kicks ass. Not much to say about that other than that it's a good tune and it provides like a nice just energetic counterpoint in the midst of the track list. And some of the vocal highs that Orville hits on Trample Out the Days are pretty much magical to my ears. Even if the pre-chorus on this one comes a bit suddenly and the hooks themselves are too brief to feel as gratifying as they could be. The final leg overall on this record is all right. The stripped back moments can be a bit of a mixed bag. The folky and rustic Hexy Mountains may be easygoing instrumentally, but is still powerful vocally. The restlessness conveyed in Orville's lyrics on this track 
really does hit hard. But then weirdly, the song City of Gold feels almost like a regression for Peck vocally. I don't know why, but he's not like really displaying the range that he was on much of the album so far. It kind of feels like he's not on pitch as, as tightly as he could be. Given how well just everything else here is performed, maybe this one could have used another take. And Let Me Drown instrumentally is another massive moment on the record, but another one that sounds so huge, so big budget, it could almost fit into a really sentimental moment during a rom-com or something like that. And that's really my biggest gripe with the record instrumentally. There is such an intense sheen to it, which does enhance a lot of the tracks here, but simultaneously does occasionally leave these songs feeling so bright it's almost blinding or it almost removes like some semblance of flavor or timbre from the instrumentation. The closing track is a pretty nice change of pace as it is a duet uh, with Bria Salmena. There's a moderate amount of vocal chemistry going on here too, but I think the track mostly works due to it being an opportunity for Orville to uh, sing goodbye so dramatically at the end of the record. Look, I'll say overall, I'm not in love with this record. There are some tracks on it I'm just not that crazy for, but I will say in terms of Orville Peck generally, after having heard this, I am most definitely a believer or much more of a believer than I was back in 2019. Some of the instrumentation and chords and instrumental palettes can, yes, run a bit too shiny or even cliche to an extent. Lafayette, I think, is a bit of an example of that. But Peck's knack for showy, extravagant performances, lyricism, storytelling, and just his persona generally does a lot to close those gaps. Plus also that certain panache that he seems to be bringing to country right now that so few other artists are. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Orville Peck, uh, forever.